me, gag me, take me to the bunny ranch. People dying, kill me in the packing house. This is this is this is the sound check. All right, now uh, now 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 the mics are hot. Oh, okay. yeah, we're, do, we're we're done with the sound check. Oh, geez, you're I, recording. This I is know, exciting. I know. So, uh, um, all right, uh, this week, uh, welcome to the Bunny Ears podcast. I am your host, uh, Macaulay Culkin. That's right. That's my actual name. Sorry. And uh, yeah, this week we have a very special guest. It's Mr. Andy Deemer. Yay! Hi there. Hi. Uh, yeah, he works for Bunny Ears. He does a multitude of things, and also. Like just not for running ears, but in life. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so I try to keep busy. I, I get bored very easily. It's yeah, it sounds that way. When the Ritalin doesn't work too well, yeah. that's that's where you come up with new projects to do, <laughs> new adventures to start. Yeah, exactly. So you know, yeah. So uh, yes, you're you're you're. you're that's uh, a great way to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Andy Deemer, and I'm on drugs. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm I'm an interesting person on drugs. <laughs> I take Lexapro in ten milligram doses. Ritalin in five. Congratulations. Well, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're doing it. Yeah. Look, Mom, I made it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, welcome welcome to my backyard. It's beautiful. Yeah. There's, there's a gnome semi-immersed in a large field of, of freshly mown grass. Well, it's not even freshly mowed. I mean, he comes on Saturdays. Today's a Thursday, so we got a couple days. And also, we, we live above an airport, an unspecified airport, so, you know, you might hear... Actually, I don't think that's an airplane. I think it's... Is it an airplane or a helicopter? It sounds like a helicopter. Yeah, we, 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 get, we get some choppers, too. Something I learned the other day is, is the police choppers keep moving... And the news choppers stay still. Ah, oh, those are the ones that hover. So that's how you can tell which is which. If if they're moving, and you know, moving in a circle so that they're not being shot at, oh, you drive away. I got gotcha. you. If they're just standing still, you know it's probably well, just yeah. You know the difference. Yeah, between, Macaulay Culkin. Yes, yeah. You know the difference between SWAT and news Spot. choppers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, no, so apparently I live near an airport and a heliport, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're one and the same, but still, like, just, what are the odds, really, what are the odds? So yeah, 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 because uh, I like podcasting out here, because it's like, you know, the weather's actually pretty nice right now. I mean, I don't get to annoy people with my smoking, either. Like, yeah, I used to that podcast. Would never, that would never annoy anyone. Oh, of course not, yeah, yeah, no, no not nowadays. I once, I once borrowed, so I haven't smoked for about five years, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago I borrowed one of your hats. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if you know this, but it, but it smells. It smells a little bit. It smells, a like, it smells like tobacco. There's a hint of tobacco to it. And by hint, I mean a very strong smell. Yeah. And That's what everything in the house smelled like. All yeah. night I felt like a smoker again. <laughs> and it was absolutely wonderful. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> well, I wasn't sure yeah. it was a trigger. You know? <laughs> oh, no. I, oh, I did want to smoke. I did. But, I know. But I felt like I had. And yeah, that made it so. I've had a so couple. Fun. I've had a couple guests on that like haven't like you know smoked in a long time, but they'll just like, just see me hungrily smoking constantly, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, can I have one of those?" And like, it's like oh, ASMR uh, I, for for the the nose and the the eyes. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it's my problem is that also like I still think it's cool. Like, I mean, like it's it, it's you know I still like the smell, and also I th still think it looks cool and stuff like that. But at the same time, I, I do have to stop pretty soon. The lady is like yeah, getting on me about it a little bit, so I I've, I got one of those little uh, those little jewel things. It kind, yeah. of, it kind of I've been paring down like a little nicotine bit. free or with nicotine with nicotine. Like oh, yeah, like oh. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm getting my uh, nicotine that, injection. <laughs> yeah, get my oral nicotine injection still. Now you, know? you smoke parliaments. Can I ask you a personal question? <laughs> oh sure. Is it about parliaments? <laughs> it, it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever take your tongue? You know how parliaments have the slightly recessed filter? The recessed filter, yeah. And do you ever take your tongue and just sort of circle it almost like it were a nipple, but I guess an inverted nipple? Uh, do you ever find yourself just doing that almost maniacally? Uh, uh, early on, when I first switched over to parliaments, like, yeah, a little bit, like, yeah, because I was a camel smoker, and then, like, there was a little bit of that, like, that kind of just, yeah, what the, what the hell is this going on in my yeah. mouth? You know, yeah. Uh, um, but, like, not really, like, not anymore. I don't really do the biting thing, because a lot of people do the biting thing. They oh. pinch it. You know, yeah. Oh, and yeah, so I didn't it, do that. Yeah, so it becomes like a funnel or something like that. When you smoked, what did you smoke? Parliaments. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I was a good New York boy. Oh, oh smoked, there you go. Oh, the, yeah, I was going to say, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, the choice of uh, uh, 15 year old boys from New York and uh, your aunt from Florida everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. well, I didn't start smoking until I was, I was working on a movie. Um, I'd run into this old, I don't want to say washed up, but 
but an older director in a bar in Tennessee. And he told me about the project he'd been working on for like five years, trying to make 10 years maybe. And he just couldn't get it together. Every producer he hired quit immediately. Or, <laughs> and drunkenly, I said, well, shit, I, I'm not working. I, I could come out to New York and help I, you I make can, this film. I, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Uh, I'll be that guy who quits next. <laughs> so I moved out to New York. We made it. One of the greatest bad films ever made. Poultrygeist, Night of the Chicken Dead. I've actually heard of Poultrygeist. It's a, it's a great, it had yeah. the second largest U.S. opening that weekend. Uh, Look at that. Yeah. Per theater. Yeah. It opened in one, it oh, opened in an one theater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of caveats here. Uh, but but um, during production on that film, I would only let people take a break if they smoked. It, it seemed like a medical favor. Yeah, yeah. You yes. know, yeah, medical way to put it, Medical, yes, yes. Yeah. And... So if you could only take breaks when you smoked, every encourage smoking. It's almost like a catch twenty two or yeah, something. You're encouraging like that. smoking. Uh, so I started smoking. Yeah, they, so I could take breaks. So you could take because of my own damn rule. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How long ago was that? That was uh, we filmed it in two thousand five, I think, or two thousand six. It came out in two thousand eight. It was, uh, I think, the New York Times called it as liberating as the uh, contemporary artwork of of Paul McCarthy. Oh, okay. Yes. Who was yeah, known for placing Barbie dolls up his... Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, not, not, not the Beatles. <laughs> no, no, no. no. The, first time, the first time I read it, I misread that sentence. And later I got to Google and looked it up and wasn't so pleased. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, I think they said for a film predicated on the, the joy of, of projectile vomit and explosive diarrhea, this film is as close to perfect as you can get. Well, yeah, it, it sounds very trauma it, it was trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. 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 yeah there it was uh, Lloyd Kaufman's uh, last film on thirty-five millimeter. Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I've uh, uh, yeah. I've gotten to know some of the joys of uh, of trauma. Uh, oh, really? Uh, Romeo and uh, yeah, Romeo yeah. and Juliet. Tr- Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. I I co-wrote the first screenplay of that. Look at you, uh, James can, Gunn. I was about to say, can you introduce me to James Gunn? No, James I'm, I'm James Gunn <laughs> said uh, that script was. About as funny as the boys who found the the bear pit and got eaten alive, and then then he 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 changed his mind and said, no, it wasn't that funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, James Gunn, he, he, amazing filmmaker, like, great just, guy. It was just like you know, uh, uh, Tom Lemon. You know, he's like, you mean John Lennon? Like, you know, like, 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 it's like just. <laughs> So you keep on confusing Beatles when it comes to compliments. Yeah. You read these amazing articles about James Gunn. Bingo star. Yeah. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, yeah he, I, I wish I could introduce. Can you introduce me to him? him oh, to uh, me? I, 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 I'm sure I'm only about a one degree away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Playing that game. You know, yeah. But uh, um, so you were in New York. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Nashville, Tennessee. My mom was on a Greyhound bus when she went into oh, labor. So you, so you know the honky tonks? No, <laughs> no, because <laughs> my mom wanted to get out of the South, so she moved us to to London. <clears throat> excuse me, to England. And London, England. Yeah, London, okay, yeah, England. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not London, Texas. Yeah. Not no, <laughs> not London, Kentucky. Which yes. uh, they, they, I think they spell wrong. They spell Sweden, Kentucky wrong with too many E's. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that's great. That's perfect. Uh, so, so we moved to London and then uh, they moved to Russia and China. I followed them to China. and I mean, what, what's the timetable for all these kind of things? So you're born in Nashville. Born in Nashville. Oh, God. And then, yeah, from it's Nashville to around. London? No, like, no, was Nashville. there an in-between thing? It wasn't really Nashville. We we were living in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Oh yeah, oh, I know. Beautiful yeah, Bowling Green. Yeah. You know Bowling Green, Kentucky? Yes, I mean I've heard of it. Okay. Yes. Well, there's but, also Bowling Green, Ohio. The, yes. Yes. No. The but more I, famous sister. Yes. Yeah. No. But yes. Yeah. So I I used to uh, be in a band. I used to tour. So we've driven. I've at least yeah, driven I, through Bowling Green before. Like yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I know. Oh. I've had a meeting two, a meeting three before. You know things like that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, I grew, uh, spent a couple years there. Moved to Houston um, for some work stuff for my my dad's work stuff. Uh, then he moved from this job came up in in London, and my dad was at a big law firm with hundreds and hundreds. I was going to say, partners. well, yeah, what was like, yeah, the reason there? Cause it, was, cause it almost sounded like army or something like that. No, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, well, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, yeah he's an army lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so he was at this big firm with hundreds of partners and. This position, one position opens up in London. And he says, oh, my God, Lori, to my mom, we got to move to London. And she says, God, yes. So they spend weeks and weeks 
preparing his application for this and mm-hmm. getting all the recommendations down. And, you know, they're, they're so stressed out about this. Could we possibly get it? Life dream come true. At this huge mega law firm in Texas, my dad was the only sucker fool enough to apply. Oh, really? Oh, it was... It was so it was, he got it, it by default. Gotcha. Um, so he he to- tried so high, <laughs> and he's the only one who applied. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, you win the Oscar for the only yeah, film yeah, that we nominated. Yeah, you, you, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how long? How long were you there for? Uh, yeah. From seventy nine to ninety one. Oh wow! Sure. So, yeah, oh, that's quite a while. My whole my whole childhood. I was going to say, how old were you when you went there? Six. Oh, did you, you left for college. And did you have an accent when you came back? Hell yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. I can't do it now. It sounds fake. Yeah, but well, I mean, it always sounds fake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it sounded fake even back then. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, I lived there for a year, and I, you know, like I started calling. Did ele- you- yeah, I, I, I called the elevator a lift. Oh, after I can a while. picture you. You'd say, "Oh, I'm just going to. I'm just gonna." Queue up. Yes, exactly. Q to go to the lift. post office. Yes, yes. The the uh, queue lift boot petrol. You know, yeah. <laughs> yes. Because the thing Drop is, it in the post. Well, I didn't do the fake accent thing that like Madonna did or whatever. Oh, I what, loved what, hers. Oh, whatever. Like Lindsay Lohan's doing, mm-hmm. which is like that's just an accent in general. Or every kid from college who did a semester abroad. Exactly. Like no, I mean, I would just say, oh yeah, uh, yeah, let's just go to the lift. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's it's like uh, when I was living in Paris, it'd be like, uh, oh, we'll go back to my flat. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. It's not yeah. like I'm going, like, oh, let's go to my flat. You know, <laughs> it's like, no, it's, uh, <laughs> but it, it was, you know, just so like, uh, you know, I'm trying to find some common ground, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, you actually, because I mean, at six years old, like, I mean, that's, that's enough time to actually gain an accent. You yeah. Know? I went that's to not fake. English schools um, the whole way through got bullied the hell out of because I was an American. Oh, yeah. Well, did you, I was going to say like, because there's an American school, like pretty much everywhere abroad, but you actually went to British schools. I went to British schools. I went to um, Lily Allen's prep school do you know her she's about 20 years younger than me i would bet the 10 years oh, 15, gotcha. i don't know how many so, years so, so no so you no. can't you can't give me your number either no <laughs> I, I think I, I went to school bjork's kids no that can't be right i don't know no, she's not that yeah she's not that old no, you know, Pr- yeah. prince hussein of uh uh where's he from brunei oh okay uh-huh yeah he was in my class oh there you um, go so yeah him and lily allen's uh future <laughs> then went to a, a church school um, after that. Oh, really? Like, uh, um, like what, what, what church denomination? Of church oh, of England. Oh, the Church of England. All yeah, right. So yeah. it was. So I went to Catholic school for, oh. for five years. Yeah. So you had to go to church a lot. Yeah, yes. Yeah, exactly. We were a hardship case. So like we got to go to the nice Catholic school for free, but we had to. I'm baptized, oh. got my first little communion, the whole works. Looking at you. But it was you know, not so bad. Yeah. Well, listen, look at. I don't know. I. Uh, it gave me all the guilt in the world. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> like, you know, I was raised Catholic, so I'm an ex-Catholic. You know, yeah. See, yeah. I was raised in England, so I have all the guilt in the world too. Yeah, exactly. Guilt and anxiety and embarrassment. About yeah, everything. But but yeah, oh. but you know, yeah, the Queen of England is still your head of state, your head of your head of your church. You oh, know, she's yeah. lovely. She is, she is, she is such a sweetie. Her <laughs> her husband. He he he's mm-hmm. awkward as anything, and uh, uh, yeah. What's what what's what his name? Philip. Philip. Yeah. Do you know about his church, his own church? There's like this oh. church of Prince Philip, and it's it's a small tribe from like ah, it's like po- you know, somewhere in Polynesia. This is like a cargo cult or something. It, so it's like this this tribe, like I think, like I said, it's like Polynesia or something like that, and they have deitized him. Like they've oh turned him into gosh. a because he fulfilled certain things that actually like like the prerequisites of like a uh, um like a uh, a prophecy. That like you know, just like oh, it was like you know, a foreigner that like you know was a commoner that married a queen, and it's so all that, these things. That gave gave look, cause. Look, to look, look up the him? church of Prince Philip. Can you imagine having a church named after you that you are not involved in? He has not. He has nothing to do with it and yeah. things like that. He visited the island at some point, but never even met this tribe. But Thank God. He, but he they said, might kill him. But the, but the church actually like or like the uh, the. Uh, uh, you know the government or whatever, like the monarchy, sent over a picture of him, and like, no, they they it's it's they essentially kind of pray to it, wow. and it's just a, it's just a photograph, a frame photograph of him. Oh. I, I'm telling you, yeah, like um, it's it's totally worth a Wikipedia like yeah, kind of, of search, course. and I'll, yeah, and also uh, I think there's there's more than one YouTube video about this, but yeah, the Church of Prince Philip. My, it's my, pretty great. One of my favorite things. Uh, I have many many favorite things, but one of my favorite things is churches. Um, I grew up in multiple churches, and every Sunday I got to decide which 
uh, uh, denomination, Judeo Christian, not denomination, but but belief, faith system. I I believed in was it the the weird nineteen or eighteen nineties cult, mm-hmm, yeah, or what that that sort of banned all caffeine or medicine. Or you talking it, about the Mormons? <laughs> no, but, but uh, yeah, 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 close newer. Enough, close I, mean, I think newer than the Mormons. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah. And smaller and less, far less politically. Uh, Christian scientists. Yes, uh, that, that was it. You really gonna find it? Did I find it? Yes. So there I could go. either be a Christian scientist or a Church of England guy, so mm-hmm. Protestant. Protestant. Um, mm-hmm. And from that, you know, every Sunday getting to choose your God. Uh, it revealed to me that sure, that maybe there are multiple pathways, and yeah. So, so um, yeah, I love exploring new religions. Yeah. The yeah. idea of Prince Philip having a church. Having a church. Beautiful. Just, it just happened. Like, just, it just happened, like, without him encouraging it. It just, yeah. it just, there it was, you know, yeah. Well, I know about the Church of St. John Coltrane and the Church, <laughs> yeah. of, uh, the church of Rajnikant, who's uh, India's biggest uh, superstar. And I don't know about this one, no. If you go to India and you just say, or you ever say to any uh, uh, first-generation Indian, you say, superstar, they know who you're talking about. You're not oh, talking really? about Shark Khan or Amitabh Bachchan or Abhishek Bachchan. You're talking about Rajnikant. Oh. He's like Chuck Norris meets Tom Cruise meets Macaulay Culkin. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you, go. you flatter me, sir. Um, and so, yeah, he, he has churches. He's a, a, another living God. Oh, gosh. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like just, yeah, like Elvis and, you know, yeah, Frank Sinatra and, you know, yeah, Meryl Streep all rolled into one. Oh, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So are we talking about you or Rodney Cunt? <laughs> both. Yes, both. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, any listeners out there, if you guys want to start a church about me, uh, feel free. Feel feel totally free. Yeah, I'm going to start to think about this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> start start a site. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, uh, so you said also you went to China. Yeah, uh, after after Poetry Geist failed, um, I decided to to go to China just for a yoga retreat, and met a cute girl there. Uh, isn't that the way at yoga class? How, how do you think I ended up in LA? I like yeah. I'm, in a, I'm in a cute girl. Now I'm in, now I own, now I'm a homeowner. All right. That's yeah. <laughs> I, I guess we have the same story for that small yes, exactly. Place. Yeah. Uh, actually, no. I didn't meet her in yoga class. I met her at dog park in Beijing. Under wow, is she Chinese? She's American. She's uh, third generation Chinese. So her I grandfather to, was Chinese. I went to Thailand all the way to Thailand to meet a Thai girl from Sacramento. That's, that's, that's my story. <laughs> You're serious. I'm absolutely that's, serious. You guys met in Thailand. Essentially. Yes. I mean, we, she, we had briefly met before, but she was thoroughly unimpressed by me. So, <laughs> so but it's when we worked together on a gig in uh, Thailand where she was like, yeah, let's yeah, it's go time. Oh my gosh. But so, so you, you met so, an American Chinese per, you know, American, girl, American in, girl in, in Beijing under you. a 50 foot statue of Shaquille O'Neal. That's oh, okay. in Beijing's uh, largest dog park. Yes. <laughs> Actually, you told me some of this story before, but I love it. Go on. It's bizarre. You can, you can Google this. It's a, a, a 55. I think it's 50. It might be 60. It might be 40. But it, around there. Statue of Shaquille O'Neal. He signed a partnership with, and I'm going to get the name of the shoe company wrong. It's China's Nike. Yeah. Like, I, I, know, I know what you're shoes, talking about. I think. Like Stefan Mulberry and all. Like they've all signed with them. Like, yeah, yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they commissioned this absurd statue of him and no one wanted it everyone's like why do we want this <laughs> we Shaq, want statue of Shaq? even Shaq didn't want it like, oh. even Shaq's parents didn't want even it Philadelphia <laughs> didn't want it it's so sad even his so parents his were parents. like no no it's cool it's cool like no <laughs> so they, they shoved it into this dog park and it's surrounded by little statues of of uh, Santa Claus riding a <laughs> rocket ship <laughs> You know what? Go on. <laughs> Just keep hey, going. If you're, looking, if you're looking for this in Beijing and you want to go, uh, it's in Changmen, uh, Um And so, so I decided I wanted to stick around. I met this cute girl. Mm-hmm. And she was uh, in a punk band out there. And I thought, I, you know. I mean, she did have like the hair and everything like that. Like, or like, you well, know. Not like a mohawk, but she, she had spikes But I'm just saying, like, you like, know, the piercings, the hair. Like, I don't know if you, if you know Hopi from the old Jamie Hernandez Love and Rockets cartoon comic strip. I don't. <laughs> a beautiful comic of the 90s. But, but she looked a lot like a, a Chinese version of Hopi, Chinese American. And so, so I said, I'm, I'm going to look and see if I can find a job here. All right. And I started looking on the job list, and all the jobs were for English teacher must be attractive and female, <laughs> or um, what was uh, bartender, 
must be attractive Always. and female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I, saw, I saw this uh, one job, editor of a magazine. I thought, my God, I've... I've always wanted to edit a magazine. <laughs> I'm, I've never done that, but sh- I bet I could do this. So I Googled how to edit a magazine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's the best way to get, ex- yeah, get, best way to get experience. Google I pl- applied for this job <laughs> after having spent an hour, <laughs> an hour on Google. This, looking yeah. up some good keywords. I have experience. Yeah, I have keywords. This is horrible. Yeah. I can't believe I'm admitting this publicly. No, please, please. Uh, <laughs> and, and they hired me basically the next day. Three days later, I, oh, goodness. I came in and dropped enough slang and terminology that they, they were like, "This finally, we found someone who knows who knows what they're what doing." They're doing. <laughs> they, it was only keywords. A, it was yeah. a low-level editor job, you know, no, nothing important that I needed to worry about. And and I'm assuming it's English language magazine. It was. It later turned out. I, well, I it took me a little while to catch on. It turned out to be a Point. Chinese government uh, propaganda magazine. Ooh aimed toward English speakers. All right, there you go. Trying to spread a love of China and Chinese culture. And I was going to say, what was it about? Like, yeah, was it about entertainment or sports mm, or something like that? It was mostly about China's uh, magnificent 5,000 years of history and culture and language. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, the Great Wall, tea, uh, <laughs> fans, and um, uh, 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 calligraphy. Oh, wow. Well, uh, yeah, oh. So, so they brought me on to help revitalize it and make it a little more exciting yeah um so you, 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 yeah uh, how many americans were there one who got fired about two weeks later oh you you were the replacement I, american, I the, replacement. <laughs> You're the token american but, but <laughs> it, it turned out i thought i was hired as a low-level editor there was a, a linguistic uh, problem and it turned out i was hired as the editor oh my goodness so as the top dog, I had no idea what I was doing. So <laughs> every night I would come home and be Googling fresh, you know, like stages of printing a magazine, stages <laughs> yes. of, you know, it's trying for everything. Just, just, just BSing your way through this whole freaking thing. <laughs> but but it, it, it went from being this, this embarrassingly um, unread magazine to being an embarrassingly slightly read magazine. Um, <laughs> it, it became quite popular in certain circles in Beijing and... Uh, in Russia and France. In, it was published in France as Planète Chinois. Oh, wow. Or Chinoise. I, oh. My French is awful. but Yeah, well, it's mine too. I lived there for five and a half years. And, ooh, uh, yeah, ooh la la. I, I know. We. Oui. Très la la. <laughs> uh, um, all right. Uh, we're about the time where I should take a break because we do dynamic ads on this on this podcast now. Whoa. I know. So either everyone's going to hear an ad or they're, we're just going to come right back and you're not going <laughs> to hear an ad at all. And you're going to feel, re- I'm going to feel really stupid. Or you may just hear this plane flying oh, yeah, above. Here, here's the plane. All right, enjoy the not plane for the next uh, however many seconds. Hello, and welcome to Meditation Minute. I'm your guide, Louis Prada. Come with me as we try to relax by sitting on the floor for a while. Today, I want you to close your eyes and try to manifest the thing you want most in life. Of course, there's no magic involved here, we're not going to be conjuring anything, but I want you to use meditation to silence that cynical voice in your head that tells you you can't have the thing you so admire. So take a deep breath and imagine that thing that you want. You want that thing so badly, but that little voice in your head is telling you, No, you can't have the thing. Whenever the cynical voice gets down on you about the thing, tell it that the thing will be stupendous, incredible, astounding. The thing will never be yours. Stop getting your hopes up. You don't understand. The thing is our ticket out of here. All of our hopes and dreams are hinging on the thing. Listen to yourself. You've driven yourself mad over the thing. Get over it, man. You don't need it. You can't afford it. But worst of all, you don't even deserve the thing. Yes, I do. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll sacrifice it all. I'll put my life on the line because I believe in the thing. You're insane. You're insane. Anyone who doesn't believe in the thing is insane. The thing is all we have. It's all we need. It's the only dream I've got left. Oh, the thing. Oh, the glorious thing. You really believe in the thing, don't you? I do. Then that settles it. 
If you truly believe in the power of the thing, then you have my blessing to buy that high-powered blender you've wanted. Thank you. And just like that, our cynical voice has been subdued. I hope you too can subdue your cynical voice to get the thing you so admire. I hope this guided meditation has brought you the serenity you seek. My name is Louis Prada, and this has been Meditation Minute. <laughs> Namaste! Oh, look, another plane just flew over. There we go. But uh, I waited till it was done. So um, where did we leave off? Oh, yes. Chinese propaganda. <laughs> Chinese propaganda. It, it was a wonderful world. Um, mm-hmm. I miss it dearly. Well, because before that, you were uh, obviously you were a screenwriter. I was a screenwriter. And then I heard about this amazing new thing called the Internet. Yes. So after, after I wrote that awful first draft of Tromeo and Juliet, um, I flew out to California, hearing that the streets were paved with gold, and couldn't find a job anywhere. So I started working in the mailroom at my brother's startup. What, what was it? It was called GameSpot. Okay. Not GameStop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but this yeah. game, I think GameStop stole their name from it. Anyhow, yeah. over, over the weeks or months, I moved my way up and... and ended up as director of technology for this startup that had become quite big. I didn't know half the employees. We'd been acquired by CBS. Um, and I decided, you know, my, my dream was always to make a movie, and I never really got to do that. Tromeo and Juliet failed. So I'm going to make a movie. I'm going to quit this high-tech thing and moved out to Kentucky to do a documentary about Islam in Kentucky. Okay, well, that's, that's, you know, life's a series of choices, and you certainly made one. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was a tricky choice, because I, I wanted to, it was a mosque was open up, opening in Bowling Green, the first mosque in Bowling Green. It does sound fascinating, actually. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to look at the dynamic. Kentucky of all places. Like in, yeah, yeah, yeah. A changing Kentucky, a changing America. And unfortunately, this was after 9-11, so all the Muslims were reluctant should we say to to talk to me on camera and the only white people who would talk to me were yeah, racists horrible horrible yeah. racists. so yeah. it wasn't so it was a racist documentary it wasn't the making. story that i saw happening yeah, you know i saw gotcha. embracing this new change and and a little nervousness but but overall people were excited about this changing town and and i end up with a bunch of footage of people talking about Things Yikes. I didn't want to be furthering. So that's why I ran into Lloyd Kaufman in the bar in Nashville. Oh, gotcha. And moved to New York on a whim, moved to China after the pollution got too bad, moved to India. You having, lived in India? Moved to southern India to, to make video games for children. <laughs> See, this is why I have you on the show because it's like, because like, Brenda was talking to you and she was like, um, she's like, no, seriously, you need to talk to Andy more because Andy has the most fascinating freaking life. So you lived in freaking India like to make video games. We lived in, a, in an amazing, <laughs> you know, Bangalore. It's, it, it, I went there in '84 and it was just this village or a series of villages. And when I moved back there in what 2014. It was a crazy metropolis with the infrastructure of a series of villages. Yeah, yeah, So they had nowhere to put the trash. So they would drive the trash out to the villages outside the city and dump them in the villages until the (laughs) villages started striking (laughs) and doing roadblocks. And then they just burned the trash in the streets. Um, Christ. (laughs) You would have uh, a Benz rolling down the street with a cow uh, walking next to it in the street. Um... So it's one of those cities where you've got the very fast-paced change, and yet the infrastructure is still trying to, to catch up. Catch with up, it. yeah, yeah. How um, long were you there for? Uh, two, two and a half years. Oh, jeez. Five you ever, years in China, you, two and a half years. So there. how many languages do you like speak? I mean, even casually. Half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. English. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, French, Russian, Japanese, Chinese... Uh, no Indian languages. Uh, I think that's it. They speak really... They, sometimes they speak better English than we do over there in India. English was the only common language in my office. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I, I forget how many languages there are. 700 or 1,700? Yeah. 
full languages. And so the tea boy and the, the, um, and the cook at the office spoke, uh, uh, whatever, Canada. And mm-hmm. all the educated programmers spoke, spoke Hindi and all the uh, artists spoke Tamil. And none of these people spoke each other's languages, so, except yeah. for English. Well, I mean, that, that goes for like Europe also. It's one of those things. I, I'll be like in a bar in Barcelona, and I'll be like a German person, an Italian person, and they'll be speaking English together. It's yeah. kind of like a, it's a little bit of the universal language, which, thank God, because because <laughs> we speak English. Listen, I, I'm, I'm a fairly intelligent person. I'm actually not that great at languages, you know. And, oh. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, yeah, no, it's great. I, listen, I lived in France for five and a half years, and uh, listen, my my my. I, I learned some French. I can read it actually a lot better than I can speak it. Uh, yeah. um, uh, and my ear is pretty okay. But that's about it. You know? But you said you learned... Can you, wait, do you ever speak French? Can no. you, I want to hear you speak some no, French. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Just a little bit. Je suis moi et je ne sais pas. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh I am God. me and I, do not, and, I, and I do not know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, you also speak Russian. Privet. Uh, I used to. Pajalista. Oh, Pajalista. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I studied it all through high school. Yeah, I dated a Russian lady for like eight years. And so, like, yeah, all I know is like, yeah, like pretty much it was like, uh, like, it's like 13 words and phrases. Actually, I met the uh, girls from Pussy Riot. Remember that? that yes, whole, that of whole course, thing? of course. So I met them at a festival. I was doing this festival. You guys were both and they, performing? And they were there. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. And so uh, backstage, uh, I was like, oh, I did a Russian for a while. They're like, yeah, we know. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I said, like, oh, I know a couple of things. And they're like, oh, okay, like, uh, what do you know? And I go, uh, you know, Privet. And they're like, oh, Privet. You know, yeah, Pujalista, whatever. Uh, and then they... Um, Said, uh, puts aluminia, kiss me. Puts aluminia, and they're like, oh, cool. And I said, diamondia, give me. Oh, <laughs> give me. Wow. And, then, and, uh, uh, and then I went, yogolone de jumpa. It means I'm hungry for ass. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, no more Russian, no more Russian. <laughs> like, oh don't, my don't. God. <laughs> they're like, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're like, don't, no more, don't speak Russian to us anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they weren't insulted. Like they knew they they they, they were in on the joke. But yeah. at the same time, they're like, yeah, we're not your girlfriend. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like they were being a little bit flirtatious, and then you just took it I, way wait, too wait, far. Well, apparently, I took it way too far. You know? in, in college, <laughs> my first year of college, I met a, a, a Russian girl who was fresh off the boat, and and she, we were joking around, and I decided to throw out uh, some some vulgarities that had been taught in Russia. <laughs> yeah, and uh, she slapped yeah. me and never spoke to me again. Yeah. I've never said those. Uh, uh, Blat suka, like you know those those ones. Sorry, Russians. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, you got one. Got I don't it. even know if I should say. I'm not even gonna say it. Okay, okay, gotcha. It's that bad. It's that bad. Yeah, gotcha. I got, I got slapped. <laughs> Good, bravo. Good for you. <laughs> Yeah, it, it has to happen in your youth, at least. Yeah, <laughs> yes. at least once. So, yeah, I've I've had at least one drink thrown in my face, only once. But yeah, it it happened. Actually, I didn't even do anything that wrong. But you know, yeah, there you go. You know, but you need that. You need to be slapped by a girl. I think at least once. You know, yeah. not in this Me Too world. You know, but no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, mine was pretty unwarranted. You know, yeah. But yeah, good for you. Well, you tell tell us the story. Uh, uh, no, no, it was honestly. It, it, I actually didn't do anything wrong. She was just way too drunk. Oh, yeah, and that's I, not a great story. And I just wasn't listening to her. Yeah, yeah, I was oh. like, yeah, yeah. It was one of those. It was fine. It was fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I felt like grabbing her by the nape of her neck and throwing her out of my apartment. You know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know no. what, Sean? Cut that, this whole section out. Yeah, just, I you know, think. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I think right now that's you've just as he's as I'm sorry to yourself. Yeah, uh, exactly. No shit. Like no shit. <laughs> so yeah, no, Sean, get rid of this. <laughs> so uh, okay, so we got what do we got? We got. Um, we got uh, New- we got New York. Well, we have Tennessee, New York. Uh, uh, you got China, Indi- it, India, yeah. uh, San Francisco. Uh, uh, you were in San Angeles. Francisco, jeez, a bunch of times for all the startups. But but that's that's I all mean, the fuck, boring. Okay, stuff. listen, how old are you? Do you do you mind I'm, saying? No, I'm 46. Okay, I think yeah. 
<laughs> you think? <laughs> I get it. Sometimes I forget my own age too, which is sad. Like, well, that, that's the all time. I keep on thinking I, I'm a forty, and I'm like, oh, I'll just give it another like year. You know, I'll be there. You know? How old are you? I'm thirty eight, but my, I got a oh. birthday in about a month. You know, okay. yeah. So, but I keep on saying, oh, I'm forty. It's like, yeah. They're like, how old are you? I'm like, yeah, give me a second. Hey, oh, actually, I'm only thirty eight. Yeah, but yeah, it's uh, one of those things. When I was in my twenties, like, uh, um, I was dreading turning thirty, dreading it. And then by the time I got to 29, I was like, I can't wait to have these 20s over with. You know, I can't wait to like, yeah, get like, yeah, just, just be done with all this. And it's kind of like, you know, listen, I actually, the 30s actually have been really, really great to me. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, wh why do I keep on saying I'm 40 when I'm not? Like, it's like, am I like, you know, anticipating that, you know, again, like, why am I trying to be older than I am, essentially? Because I'm starting to get white flecks in my beard and things like that. Like, oh, yeah, I'm I, jealous. I'm starting to do that. Like, you know, yeah, it's happening. I know? really, I want more gray in my hair. I know, yeah, like, you, got, you, have, you have some flecks. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's mature. It's Marvel. It's very Marvel. It's very Mar very Marvel. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's looking good. It it it, it suits you. You better take it off before it suits you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. So you do the turn up kind of stuff. So that's the thing is that like okay, so you were fil uh, film writer, uh, a documentary maker, an editor in chief, a, a, a game maker. And then you went into San Francisco for startups. Director of technology, director of product. I worked at, uh, remember Beats Music, Jimmy Iovine, yes. Dr. Dre's company? Yes. The uh, one that got sold to Apple. Yeah, I was there. Um, I was a uh, director of product there. Uh, but never met Dr. Dre. Never saw Dr. Oh, Dre. Oh, I was going to say, does he ask about me? Hey, 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 I, I don't know. And <laughs> Jimmy Iovine flew me across the country in his uh, private jet and never acknowledged me. Uh, oh, there, were, there were four or five of us on the plane. and It'd be great if you were sitting right next to each other. <laughs> the stewardess came over and tapped me on the shoulder at one point and said, uh, sorry, Jimmy would like to sit there. Ooh. <laughs> So I stood up and got over. And yeah, moved no. across the plane. But um, no, so I did technology. Basically, it's all media and entertainment. Yeah, in different in different forms. In different forms. Yeah, that's what we keep on kind of. And now you're doing some stuff with Bunny Ears right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Doing all the uh, a lot of analytics kind of stuff. A lot of data, a little creativity. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, very fun. Yeah, good. And playing around at the Magic Castle. I was uh, that's where I was just about to go because hey. so uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Mr. Andy Demer here is a magician. Yeah. A magician. A, a, a magician as, as the kids call it, you know. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, you guys might not recognize him, but he was actually on a previous podcast when we were at the Max. Uh, he was our original Max. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before Ed Alonzo actually showed up. <laughs> he kicked me off stage. <laughs> yeah, I know. I kicked you off stage. But then also, we, we kind of kicked him off the poor, podcast. Poor Ed Alonzo. <laughs> I, I still, he was I like, still I came all, I, He's like, I, dr I drove four hours for this. And I was like, no, like, no I'm so sorry. Because I saw him a week later. And it was like, it was like oh, like uh, it wasn't like us. Uh, it's like, no, I, 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 maybe it was a miscommunication. Like, I don't know, man. Like, you know, yeah. Like, <laughs> but uh, he's still like a sweetheart and stuff like that. He's but, uh, so sweet. He, he's honestly, he's such a great magician. And yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. No, when I, when I first saw him on uh, Say by the Bell, it was like, yeah, but I like, looked him up. I'm like, oh, this guy's a legit magician. You know, yeah. And but so, he's about 10 years older than me. Mm -hmm. And, but I was dressed as him from the old TV show and yeah. all night at, at Say <laughs> by the Max Bar or restaurant, I saw these, these girls who, you know, younger women who would point at me and whisper something and say, I think it's him. <laughs> you could see their mouths. It's him. And all evening, building up to the podcast, people were pointing at me thinking I was thinking him. You, you're Max. And then poor Ed Alonzo <laughs> comes up and, you know, he's... The real Max. Yeah, yeah. the real Max. Um, all these women's hearts were broken. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. But they still thought you were cute, though, I'm they, sure. Maybe, or yeah. just possibly semi-famous. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow, yeah. Here's the semi-famous guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, but yeah, so you, how long, you've only been doing magic for what, like a year About or so? About a year, a year and a half ago. How'd you I, get into magic? I wandered into the Magic Castle. My wife took me on a date to the Magic Castle. Oh, is, she, is she a member? No, no. She she found some very convoluted method to get in. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but the Magic Castle is this turn-of-the-century mansion built uh, at the top of Hollywood where it's filled with maybe nine magic theaters and five bars 
and you have to wear a suit and tie and jacket and everyone's and all spiffy you know, everyone's yeah. very spiffy and fancy and you just wander from theater to theater watching magic shows all night and it happens seven nights a week um, but you can't get in without an invitation. Invitation, yeah, by a member or something like that. And also, a lot of big names like float through there. Like, yeah, like Penn and Teller just happen to be in LA. Then, boom, you'll, yeah, like yeah, they'll they'll play one of like the places there. Like Copperfield will uh, play there. Shim Lim from America's Got Talent is always there. Oh yeah, yeah, um, he's fantastic. Yeah. And yeah, mm-hmm. so so she took me there on a date, and I said, "Oh my God, I've never thought about magic before," but. I want to be a magician. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, you know, this follows on the heels of a series of other poor decisions. I want to be a cult leader. I want to be a mahout. I want to be a taxidermist. Go Each on. of which yeah. have taken me down <laughs> bizarre. Uh, I want to be a North Korean propaganda minister. Um, <laughs> yeah, each of exactly. these did lead down a, a, a wonderful path, but, but this magician one stuck longer than those others did. Mm-hmm. Um, and certainly longer than the ventriloquism uh, uh, dream that I had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so so I, I, I said, I want to do this. I want to be here every night. So I started taking classes a year and a half ago and um, applied right at the time where they made it very difficult to get in. You have to go to, to become a member. You have to perform magic before, before a, a crowd of angry old wizards yes. these wizened old wizards who <laughs> scowl so and yeah. they say oh that joke wasn't funny or or oh i saw what you did with your slights of hand there young yeah, man yeah. yeah nice hands jerk yes, yes. yes. yeah yeah and and they hate you because you're young and beautiful and they're old and mm-hmm. and wise but 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 you have spark um, so, so I didn't get in and I, I tried again and when was the first time you tried? I tried on my birthday on my 45th birthday. I thought you, wh- 46th, wh- 46th birthday. I, I said, when is that? This exactly. Other, October 1st, China day, uh, oh, yeah. liberation day for China, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is part of the reason I was so celebrated in propaganda circles there. <laughs> nice. Um, so, so you tried in October, and I, I tried in October, failed miserably, wept for three days. Really, I mean, honestly, you feel like you have really like failed miserably. Like, did you actually like mess up tricks? Or? I did not. They hated me. They just didn't like his. They scowl, these eyes burrowing in. I mean, uh, of course, they're going to be you know, staring at your hands, and yes, of uh, course, they're going to be. A woman doing fell stuff. asleep during my routine. Yeah. Uh, a, a it's the opioid she crisis. She may have died. Though. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's the opioid crisis, <laughs> is what it is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let's not discuss that. Um, uh, she, she, she may have died. I, a man. Th- these are wizards. And I he killed. Forgot, I, I slayed. He forgot. He forgot the card he chose. You know, you take Oy. a card and remember that card. He he was like, well, it might have been the ten of hearts or the four. Okay, yeah. No, honestly, that, clubs. that sounds like somebody sandbagging you for sure. So it, it was it was a tricky night. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I did. I wept for three days and then rededicated. Did myself. you actually cry? Uh huh. You did? Yeah, I did. Well, yeah. no, there's nothing wrong with that. No, 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 no. I'm a cry. Oh, I'm a crier. Real men cry. You don't, should, don't you should take me, me a love actually sometime and watch me <laughs> weep. <laughs> yeah. I, oh. I, just, I just watched Inside Out, the Pixar movie. And oh. I, I, the first five minutes, it's just weeping. My, my, oh, wait. No, I'm thinking of up. Sorry. No, no. My girlfriend was, was uh, you know, I was watching it out here in the backyard and she was like, you know, in the kitchen and she saw and it was the bing pong like thing oh, 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 oh. No, she saw she she caught me crying essentially yeah. like, and no she thought it was the cutest thing and she hugged me did and she all save the stuff. tears in a jar yeah you know, we, could, yeah. we could sell those on no, the website no, no, i saved them <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh that's what that jar yes. i took a sip of that yeah, okay. if you're younger it was salty more powerful mm, mm, what, what is this bacon yeah, yeah. Oh, so sweet it was kind of like a rainbow's urine uh, rainbow's urine <laughs> yeah, yeah i meant a unicorn but yes, a rainbow's know. urine yes. as well. Ra- yeah, rainbow's pee too. Everybody poops, okay? Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, but also, I mean, you, at that point, you'd only been doing magic for how many months? Uh, eight months. That's what I'm talking about. It, it was a little arrogant. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was assertive, aggressive. It, it was. It, it was, uh, yeah. Bold. Uh, yeah, um, but also, so when you applied again, X amount of months later, I mean, did you change your routine up a lot? It like, was entirely you different. I worked with uh, a master of magic named Siegfried Tiber, uh, who uh, recently fooled Penn and Teller, 
And oh, was he on Fool Us? He was on Fool Us. Oh, I love that show. And and fooled the pants off those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and we developed out an old CIA, or sorry, a routine based on the old CIA mind experiments. Ooh. So when the CIA, you know about MK Ultra. Oh when, yeah, yes, yes. When the CIA was trying to brainwash people and yeah, with with drugs. I mean, it's it's multi layered. Like yeah, you know, it wasn't just one experiment. It no. was it went on for decades. I was reading yeah. today about how they ran a sex club in in Los Angeles. Oh, sorry, San Francisco, where they would dose patrons at the yes. sex club with LSD. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then film them and see what happens. I know, I know. it's so it's amazing. Like it, it's. It's one of those ones where it just adds so much fuel to those conspiracy theorists kind of stuff yes. where it's kind of just like, oh, like, oh, did you hear that they put LSD like in our water or something like that? They're like, haha, yeah, that's crazy talk. No, they actually did. Like, I mean, like, well, yeah, we actually, all this stuff. I mean, you look at Pizzagate. I don't know when this episode would air, but 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 you look at Pizzagate and it's absolutely crazy. And then you have Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, and yeah. Like, maybe it's not so I, crazy. I, I know, I know. Pedophile Island and um, stuff like that. I was just reading up about that today, even. Like, I was like, oi, Gavolt. You know, yeah. So I just finished this incredible book that is, I'm sure, complete fiction, but it's called Psychic Warrior by one of the uh, CIA's uh, or the defense agency's um, psychic warriors. You, you ever see the, the uh, was it, uh, Men Staring at Goats? That yes. movie, yes, that, same story. That's what I'm. Yeah, same that's, story. So that's what I'm talking. Yeah, the, the messed up thing is, the parts that aren't true are just how accurate he claims he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fact yeah. is, they were doing all no, these experiments. Try- Listen, it, it, and they, it, they're open it. They're like, "Yep, we tried it. Well, well, Didn't well, work." Well, well, yeah. Why wouldn't you though? Look, if you're the U.S. government, you you throw some money at that yeah. at that project. Like, yeah, look, what if it works? And what if it did? Yeah, exactly. And we just don't. No. I know. Another another freaking helicopter flying over. Yeah, but, the helicopter uh, is moving. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's, it must be a news chopper. <laughs> hey, all the news is fit to print. <laughs> Andy Deemer, Macaulay Culkin in the backyard. <laughs> um, but uh, um, but uh, yeah, no. But like, so, uh, apparently they also started doing that because the Russians, uh, the Russians did some propaganda kind of stuff where they said we're trying out some psychic and remote viewing. They claimed things. huge success, and they had huge success. All and these so, kids, these it, neophytes in across Russia, and these it was children a, and of it was the a, corn. It was a complete lie. They were totally lying that they even had this program, oh. but now the U.S. had to do it because the Russians, they heard the Russians were doing yes. it, so that was literally the reason why they did it. So, well, the Russians are doing it, so we have to do it. And they actually took it seriously. They took it actually seriously. Like, and I take it seriously as well. I, I try these experiments. and, <laughs> and <laughs> Really? Okay, okay, I mean, listen, everybody's tried to move something with their mind. Yes. Yes. Everyone's watched Star Wars. <laughs> I, saw, I saw Brenda moving... A pendulum with her mind. Oh yes, a week ago. <laughs> oh really? You, you were there. You were you were sitting oh, there. You oh were, yes, 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 yeah. It exactly. was above your hand. I did. I, I honestly, I may have influenced a key bent in Max's hand, and <laughs> I may have influenced that key to bend through non uh, psychic means. Oh, I'm not telling well, you. Yuri Geller but, over here. Yeah. But but <laughs> the pendulum that was swinging over her hand, I had nothing to do yeah, with. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I know. I believe you me. So yeah. No, she's magic. Yeah. Oh, she is. How, how do you feel? How do you feel about uh, Yuri Geller? I thought you were going to say, how do you feel about my girlfriend? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, uh, Uri, Uri Geller, I love him. Yeah, he, he's a, well, a master. See, see, I, have a prob- I have a problem with him, and the same way that Penn and Teller have a problem with him, is that he presents his magic as if it's real. Uh-huh. And there's a pro- I have a problem with that. But what if it is real? There, there was uh, so the Seriously, amazing though. Randy <laughs> has spent much amazing of his Randy, career. Amazing Randy, yes. No, I'm a much huge of his fan of Amazing him. career uh, debunking what uh, Uri Geller. Yeah, uh, he, he actually does. he was one of those people who made me a skeptic and, and, and molded me into the skeptic I am today. But then, then people say, well, you know, what if ten percent of what he does is with his mind? Mm-hmm. Isn't even if one percent. Even if isn't that special enough? That would be amazingly special. It would be if it were true. But that's the that's the problem that I have, and that's the problem that, like, yeah, like I said, like the Penn and Teller kind of like types. It's that something have, I struggle with every day because my my magic is it's the illusion. It's, it's all the, about illusion, the illusion, but though. it's it's talking about these old CIA experiments that really did take place and may not have had the success rate that they have under my watchful command. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah. And it's a challenge that I do think about. Do I need to say? I'm faking it all. 
No, but at but the same time, it's also yeah. I, I, I also do it mean. with a wink and a smirk. And I think that's kind of that's the big difference. And a little bit of Jim from Taxi Crazy. Yeah. Uh, or or uh, Doctor uh, Doctor uh, Doc Brown Emmett Brown. Yes, crazy. yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but but is it is that enough? Yeah, exactly. All right, let's go back to a dynamic ad right now um, because yeah, whatever. It's this thing that I'm doing now where I'm I'm taking a break every 20 something minutes all right goodbye and we're back i hope you enjoyed that ad um it'd be weird if it was an ad for yeah yeah i'm gonna buy it wouldn't it be weird if it was an ad for my own show that would be really weird (laughs) buy my stuff (laughs) you should you should except the shop is down right now yeah exactly (laughs) so you can't well andy would know because andy andy we actually didn't specify like you work for bunny ears like you know and yeah you you've been uh streamlining the things I, try, that we do. I try and streamline. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've had success in some places and, and failure in others, but it's all experiments. We're well, very yeah, lean at no, Bunny no, Ears. No, 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 failures. I wouldn't put it that way. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> failure is okay in the modern doc, uh, era. Parlance. Yeah, era. yeah. <laughs> you fail forward. You fail faster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if, yeah. He's, he's been falling forward. It's been yeah. great. Yeah, you're hired. <laughs> Here's a man who falls forward. <laughs> very proudly. Very yeah, bold. Yeah. Bold, that's what I am. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a, it's all the stuff that I have no idea about, to be honest. It's, well, I'm glad I'm there to take it off your shoulders. No, you take it off my shoulders and also teaching me about it, like kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, like just the way the website looks and all that kind of. Because also, I'm still a laptop user, you know. But like uh, most people who visit our site, bunnyears.com, uh, um, yeah, they're, they're they're on their phones. They're on their phones. It's outrageous! They just scroll on their phones. They'll and click scro- and little phone scroll. It's very fancy. Yeah, I know. It's very. Yeah. It's very. Uh, yeah, we all have supercomputers in a box. I, lo- I love the phone scrolling. Yeah. So yeah, you've been streamlining all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's the thing. Is like, yeah, it's like, is the guy who's like, whatever, like you, you write movies. You move to India. You you you. You also just you now you work for Bunny Ears. Like you're you're all over the place. You're a magician. Like it's it's crazy. It's yeah. but crazy in a good way. But I'm happy. No, I, I mean yeah. I, I appreciate. It. Like I mean it's like the kind of crazy. I'm like yes no come 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 to Bunny Ears. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think I, Bunny Ears attracts these very creative, very interesting people with dynamic backgrounds. I mean, mm-hmm. look at Sean. He, yeah. 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 Does comic books, yep. does TV shows, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He's just all over this media. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> so what's the craziest thing you've ever done? Oh, don't you, you, know, yeah. you want to talk about? No, oh, exactly. You would happily <laughs> talk about? No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, no. It, it involves way too many drugs. Like, yeah, no, it's, it's, can't, can't go there. Yeah, see, the, the lady just closed the curtain. <laughs> she peeked out and was like, don't you dare. How dare you? <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean, okay, I guess, I guess I can ask you the same question. What's the craziest thing you've ever done? So um, they, or rather, that you'd want to admit on a podcast. <laughs> I probably so I'd been dating this girl in China for a couple months and it came time for us to take a trip and she said where do you want to go and I I said you know I think Kim Kim Jong Il Kim Il Sung whichever the the dear leader the I'll dear be- leader is about to die and I want to go to North Korea before he dies and I okay. want to see the mass games Jesus Christ all right <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we had not traveled overseas at this point. We had we had spent our entire relationship in China. And <laughs> so she said, so "You want to go to North Korea on a date?" I said, "It's going to be romantic." You're, so uh, you're so lucky because you're asking for it. I took I took my girlfriend after a couple months. I guess we'd been dating for two months, thinking about it. To North Korea. Okay, so it's still a fresh new thing. So she's actually kind of still willing to. Yeah, it's like that scene in Gone Girl where she like, talks about new girlfriend being the good new girl. Would she do it now? Now with the kid? No, no, yeah, no, exactly. No. That's right. And also things have changed. In. I mean, I know. I mean, some of the people saying. in North Korea have have done. Some of the Americans have have gotten in trouble there. Well, and, that's what I'm talking. Looking at yeah, but that hadn't happened yet. Being a gaijin, looking at over yeah. there, like yeah, you don't need that. Look at so so she agreed and. We called up the travel agency and they said, well, you have to go this weekend or you can't go at all because you're Americans. And after next weekend, you're banned. 
So we basically, we had, we had to collect a lot of money in, in cash, in dollar bills, U.S. currency, pay someone over a desk, all this money, who we'd never met before, in cash. Oh, this is so shady. And then they <laughs> gave us a, a two-hour lecture on everything we could and could not do. Because you had to go with a tour guide a absolutely everywhere, right? And not one tour guide. We had three tour guide minders, mm -hmm. a driver... And like, then at certain places, we would be followed by secret police. Yeah, don't leave your room unless oh, yeah. blank. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, we could leave the room. And we could go to karaoke bars. But <laughs> they put us, yeah, and we could play golf, and we could uh, go shoot pool and play, go bowling. But they would lock us on an island at night. And we couldn't leave the island. The guards on the island were pointed in, not out. Yeah, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, that was a little... That's fucking crazy. That's probably crazy. Yeah. No, cause, uh, uh, I, I had another friend, actually, Stu. He went yeah. to North Korea. Stu went to North Korea. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck are you thinking? I mean, honestly, what the fuck were you thinking, Andy? Dean? I, I, well, there. we got to see the mass games. I, uh, Stu probably saw the mass games as well. This is 50,000, no, 75,000 people performing synchronized acrobats. Acrobatics, uh, starving people. For uh, <laughs> no, I think because they get to live in the capital capital city, and are good acrobats, they are not starving. But they do have to practice over concrete floors. Mm -hmm, yeah. They're all little children. Yeah. So when they do the flip and miss, I'm, I'm sure the government pays hurts. for their foot and hip surgery later on in life. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, believe me, I'm a former dancer. I know. I know what happens to your body when you do things like that. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm You're a former dancer. Yes, I'm. How a, did I'm I miss this. I'm a classically trained ballet dancer. I was a dancer before I was an actor. Really. Really. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. I, do you still bow? No. Bow, 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 no. 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 Bally? I think. Bally. Think. It was. It's almost like a thank God I got out of it kind of thing because it was um the acting thing started paying more i guess it was wow. really what it was but yes no i danced at lincoln center i was uh, you know i was a classically trained belly dancer i went to the school of american ballet for a number of I years i keep thinking you're saying belly dancer belly dancer. <laughs> no, yeah. a belly dancer i'm a classically trained belly dancer oh uh, yeah no I, I performed at lincoln center for for a number mm. of seasons and so forth looking that's at, wonderful oh yeah believe me I, I used to be able to put cigarette butts out on the bottom of my feet like that's like that's what it does. That's how you. calloused up they oh, were. Oh yeah, yeah. No, even to this day, like Incredible. yeah, it just like yeah, okay. like I, I can still kind of do it. Looking at him, and that and this is from years that's ago. A good party this, trick. this is from when I was like, you know, like I stopped the last time I did it when I was, I was like maybe about twelve or thirteen, and I can uh -huh. still kind of do it. Like, yeah, you know, believe me, I have a lot of like I've you know because when you're on that scene, like I actually know a couple of other dancers, and like yeah, no hip replacement surgery. They're not even like they're barely thirty. Oh. And oh, like that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. no, it really, it doesn't number on you being like, you know, an acrobat, being a and ballet so dancer. Being one of those in a country with very little health care yeah. and concrete where, floors where, yeah, where, instead where, where, where you, of nice where, mats. Yeah, you, where you drink, a, you, you drink a grass soup for dinner. Like, yeah, you know, yeah no wonder. No, 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 they didn't drink grass. They would take us to these incredible restaurants. Oh, I'm sure they would. palatial restaurants. Every table would be set with, with so much food. We'd yeah. be the only only customers there. I know. No, I know. It's. Yeah. Uh, do you ever it see? It was a little too similar to that Seth Rogen. I was movie. just about to say. Do you ever see the interview? That's it exactly was, where it I was, was going. The interview. I'm not going to say his name, but but there's there's a New Yorker who I met in North Korea. He's a um, a six foot six, I think Abraham Lincoln impersonator tuba player. <laughs> uh, Honestly, I've, and, I love every word that and you just human said. Human genetics professor at Columbia. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I don't even have to name him at this point. And competitive eater. Uh, he, he was in the. He was. He introduced Kobayashi to the dipping technique. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> um, so I so I met him in a karaoke bar in in Pyongyang. And All right. Talking to him, I said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a small world." Yeah, you should watch this movie, Pool Tree Geist. You'll love it. And he said, "Pool Tree Geist." I have two copies on DVD, <laughs> and I was at the premiere. Isn't that amazing? So I, I knew we would be, uh, you know, yeah. great great friends. Yeah. But he, how, why, why, did, why did I get on to him? Oh, oh, the interview. The interview. Yeah. So, so some of the reviews of the interview said that Seth Rogen was based on this guy, uh, okay. because this guy learned to play basketball and then won an auction so that he could play Dennis Rodman in basketball over that game of horse that they played. Mm, he yeah. convinced Dennis to send, to bring him to North Korea as his official translator with the cute leader. 
So when is that like because uh, he's been there a couple of times, Dennis Rodman? So were you talking about when he brought the whole team over? This yeah, this was the second time the Patty Power trip when he brought the whole team over. Oh, okay, yeah. Which is, have you actually watched that that press conference that Dennis Rodman gave for that? No, it's kind of amazing. He's he is all over the place okay, because he's very sane and centered. Oh, hey, that's exactly what it is. He is definitely not drunk. And he's definitely... He yeah. doesn't drink. He's sober. <laughs> yeah, no, he's to- completely sure. sober. And uh, yeah, uh, um, it, honestly, it's very, very special. It really, really is. Uh, um, yes, uh, I actually recommend... I wouldn't recommend stopping this podcast and watching it, but I would recommend watching it after this podcast. Okay, I, I, will, uh, I will. I'm will. i going to stop this podcast. Yeah, I'm going to watch it right yeah, now. I'm going to watch it right now. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, no, it's... Yeah, I mean, look, look. I actually kind of see where Dennis Rodman's coming from when it comes to all of this kind of stuff. Where it's like, listen, I'm trying to bridge the gap mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah, where it's like I'm trying to kind of help slowly westernize this communist country and so forth. Yeah. but really, it's Dennis Rodman, though. Dennis Rodman and and Donald Trump, but and it's also but at the it's same also time? and it's also using him as a piece of propaganda on that end as well kind of thing like yeah so it's like dennis rodman's actually kind of being also used as a bit of a tool because i mean he can be a bit of a tool (laughs) yes yeah i mean just as a person (laughs) like yeah yeah i I don't know him so i can't say but yeah me neither but still i'm just watching him it's like oh he's he's just you know sometimes he can be a tool but at the same time it would be wonderful you know i'm not a great fan of dennis rodman i'm not a great fan of other people involved in north korean politics right now but let's just say Dennis Rodman and this other guy, this this orange guy, <laughs> together opened up North Korea by yeah. some weird stroke of luck. Right? That wouldn't that be that amazing? That would be wonderful. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like kind of a, I have like mixed feelings about the WWE doing stuff in Saudi Arabia. Have you heard about like all no, this kind of stuff? I They've been doing shows over there, and also they're getting paid a buttload of money. And it kind of really does feel like a bit of a propaganda kind of thing on you know Saudi Arabia's part, where like, mm-hmm. oh, like you know, see, you know, women can still kind of drive, you know, and like, oh, and like, look, yeah. we have westernized wrestling over here. But at the same time, and you know, it's like, oh, see, we're westernizing our country, but then yeah. also at the same time, it's also it's. It, you're, you're also backing a really funky Tricky. regime, you know. Yeah. I mean, b- back in high school, I was uh, really into the ANC, the African National Congress, and used to do a lot of protests and demonstrations with the ANC. And in, in London, at South Africa House, we had the the world's longest twenty four hour protest, and it was at that point it was like ten. Or well, 20 how can years. it be the longest twenty four hour protest? Uh, 24 hour 24 protest? 24 hours a day. Oh, uh, gotcha. Non-stop, <laughs> the longest non-stop protest. <laughs> Wouldn't the longest 24-hour protest be exactly 24 hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're more 24 hours than you. Okay, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. No, no, this was uh, 10 years or 20 years, I forget. <laughs> cross, cross the international um, date line. <laughs> and and uh, one of our things was we England should not be playing cricket against South Africa or with South Africa. We should not engage them in any Cause, sports. Because during that time, it was apartheid was still was still active. Was still fully functional yeah, yeah. and horrible and um, or dysfunctional. And we would people would come up and start street ball, brawls with us over this stance. It wasn't about ending apartheid. It wasn't about um, our, our protest or the fact that, that we were the working with the ANC. It was the fact that we didn't want sports to happen. Yeah, yeah. With South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a touchy subject. It's, it's that thing where it's like, okay, are you encouraging them by just simply yeah. engaging them? Or by engaging them, are you changing the, the hearts and minds? It's, it's uh, yeah, I'm not smart enough to answer that question. Yeah, me neither. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and like, we're both obviously very stupid people here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, what yeah, have we done? Yeah, yeah. So, it makes sense that we, you know, couldn't solve, you know, the world's ills right now. Right yeah. now. But yeah. if you ran for president in 2020, mm-hmm. <laughs> think of how we could change that. Well, listen, I, I, I am, uh, I think, uh, 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 the cast of Home Alone, too, I, I think I'm a little more qualified than Donald Trump is to be president. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. At least you said the name first. Yeah, yeah, I you know. Exactly. Oh, Eve, we, 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 let's not even go down that road. Because no. the be, no. the best way to alienate half your audience is to talk anything about politics. Yeah. No matter what, you're going to alienate at least forty percent of your it's audience. True. 
Yeah, and so yeah, we don't really talk a lot of politics here on the the Bunny Ears podcast. Sean, uh, cut that bit as well. <laughs> I don't know if Sean actually cuts these bits or if they get heard, but listeners, tune out for that bit. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, no. God, God bless everybody. How about that? How God bless America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, look, uh, well, you probably didn't bring any magic tricks, did you? Uh, I have some cards, but I don't think that would be very fun on the air. I know. I was going to say, it's it the same thing that happened before. <laughs> it's the same thing that happened. It's like I, thought doing that, I thought that thing, that it was mind reading. It was mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. picturing a place. Yeah, um, exactly. And it was also, you picked a place that uh, I'd actually been. I, I no, I didn't pick any place. You did. It's true. I'm just saying. A place was picked, and a it happened to be. Picked. Well, you, you, My Mac. That that was not purposeful. That Mac picked a place that he yeah. had been before. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. That that I had lived for a number of years. No, actually, like yeah, you know, flip through the whole thing, and next thing you know, it said Paris, France, that and was beautiful. yeah, yeah, and uh, there you go. That's that's where I used to live. So, uh, um, all right. Uh, do you want to plug any social media stuff or anything like that? Things that you do? No, no, no. You can. F- Follow me on nothing. nothing. Instagram, sure. Instagram, Andy Deemer, D E E M E R. Oh, yeah, there you go. And uh, I am, uh, um, let's see, I am uh, Incredible Kulk on the Twitters, and I'm also Kulkamania uh, on the Instagrams. Sorry, I'm, I'm being distracted right now because I'm trying to find my, my own phone number. I always do this at the end of every episode. I'm like, eh, well, I always forget my own phone number. But you should leave us a uh, voicemail because we will play them at the end, and they're super adorable. Uh, okay, it is 845-393-4629. That's 845-EZE-HOAX. Uh, so yeah, leave us a voicemail. How can you not remember that? Easy E hoax. I know. I need to, I need to read the real number first. Yeah. 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 So you know, yeah. So uh, leave us a voicemail. It's freaking hilarious. And uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll play it. Listen, keep them relatively short though. Like you guys that like leave like two five minute long ones. We're not gonna play those. Uh, but you know, keep it short and pithy. There you go. We can do it. And come see me at the Magic Castle. Yes, come, come to see the Magic Andy Castle. Andy Deemer performing Magic at the I guess, castle. I, I, we we just went like a like what like a week ago, you know, and it was it was great. It was, it was great. Fun. It, it was, was, was fun. It was fun. It was fun as balls. Is what it was. And balls are fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, yeah, we had a ball and a biscuit. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's good reason to dress up and yeah, yeah see see some magic and everything like that Andy Deemer thanks for coming on the show thank you Macaulay. thanks for telling me about your life uh, have a good night yeah yeah exactly have a good life yeah good 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 life good night yeah alright bye we're always getting voicemails you dial 845 easy e hoax I said it's 845 easy e hoax it might sound dumb, but it's not a joke. It's 845 easy easy hoax. Hey. Motherfucking hoax. That's 845-393-4629. Motherfucking hoax. Voice mails. We're always getting voice mails. Hi Macaulay, calling from Maine podcast keep it up bye hi max this is max um just calling from work because i have literally nothing else to do anyway i'm calling because i have a really really bad joke for you what does satan do to relax he takes a bielza bubble bath have a good weekend <laughs> I fuck you too. Hey, I am getting sick and tired of all this bullshit that's going on out there. It's just civil war is going to happen because it's just too much bullshit. Okay, bye. Macaulay, Mitch in Milwaukee. Saw you were here recently. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, really appreciate the uh, text. Um, really appreciate the podcast. Doing a great job. Keep up the good work. And uh, try not to suck too many dicks. Tom Green uh, was hilarious. Thanks. Bye. Find me, gag me, take me to the bunny ranch. You!
You are freaking lumberjack! Oh my god.